who shouldn't use mediation? Well, let's talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of mediation. It's a very popular tool that some people like to use for resolving their disputes. Uh, clearly, one of the, the couple of the biggest uh, advantages to mediation is it's consensual. So no one can force you into mediation, and presumably people who choose to use it want to use it. Another uh, advantage of mediation is that lawyers are generally not present, especially when parenting issues are discussed. The lawyers are usually in the background. And the final uh, part about mediation that people like is you get to choose the person that is going to help you resolve your dispute. Now, of course, there are some disadvantages. The biggest one is a mediator has no power over you. So you might like what a mediator says or recommends to your spouse, but that doesn't mean that a mediator is going to be able to implement those decisions because a mediator is not a judge. And I would think that the final disadvantage of mediation is that a mediator is not going to give you legal advice. A, legal, a mediator may give you options or make suggestions, but at the end of the day, the mediator's job is simply to get you to an agreement. So what happens sometimes is that when we are sitting on the lawyer end of things and a client brings us an agreement that has been drafted during a mediation session, sometimes legally it's not a good move for the client. Legally, sometimes the advice that we may give may contradict or be inconsistent with what they wanted to reach in mediation. And the clients sometimes think that if they had known the legal advice at the outset, they would have entered into a different agreement. So the bottom line is, for mediation, it's always good to have a lawyer in the background if you're going to be using a mediator as well, so you can have the legal advice as you go along. In terms of what sort of people should or shouldn't be in mediation, that's a pretty easy one. For people who should be in mediation, they're generally the following types of personalities. They're people who can work well with each other. They're people who can understand the other person's needs. They're people who are able to empathize with the other party's position and know that there's going to be some compromise involved. On the other side, people who are not well suited to mediation are people where there's a lot of, um, uh, a lot of vengeful behavior. People just want to be in each other's face in order to get something from the other side without understanding the need to compromise. There are cases where people don't want to make full disclosure. There are cases where people don't want to act in good faith. And finally, people, cases where there have been a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of domestic violence, where one partner has seriously abused the other, are usually not well suited for mediation because of the power imbalances and the um, unequal division of uh, bargaining power that exists in the room. It makes it for a very hard job for a mediator to provide a fair and even balanced uh, atmosphere.